I will make a promise that, I'm gonna say this, make a promise that within the next five years, I'm gonna say that until I'm like 38, <laughs> I will wait on having a kid on my own and see if I find someone else, like a guy to have kids with in that time frame. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Um, earlier you mentioned um, you've contemplated, you've thought about if push comes to shove, I'm gonna just go have my own kids, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, I'm against that a thousand percent. <laughs> and the reason I'm against that is because I don't want to continue to see black people um, replicating the traumas that we experienced. Right. You know, so. And as much as a lot of women these days think, oh, I don't need no man. I can be mom and dad and all that bullshit. Your kids need a father. Mm -hmm. Their kids at some point are going to come to you and be like, who's my dad? Oh, yeah. Where is he at? Yeah. You know, and even if it, it's from a sperm bank, they might spend half their life trying to track that. So, like, yeah, <laughs> I think you've thought about that. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I don't want that. I don't. I really don't like the sperm donor thing is my last resort, but you know how women, we have a time clock basically because our bodies literally are on a time clock. There's only but so many, you know, times we can actually get pregnant by a certain time. We can't do that anymore. Um, my family, unfortunately, we start our cycles early. We end up kind of early too. I'm now in my early thirties. So I literally have all of my 30s and then a few of my 40s to have children. If there's not someone who's, I feel like, capable to be, you know, a good partner and a father, then I'm going to go for that. <laughs> um, and that's because one of my dreams is to be a mom. I currently am a god mom. I have two beautiful god kids. I love them like they're mine. And... Like I just had them with me Thursday and yesterday. They were, you know, over my place. And uh, when they go home, a lot of times I'm like, I don't want them to go home. <laughs> like I really seriously love children. And uh, I want to experience that in my life where I can be a good mom and show my children the things that, you know, like I didn't get, you know, and kind of spoil them with love and affection and, you know, take them traveling and, Cause I like to see them learn and become the person that they're supposed to be. So I want a hand in that. And I want to experience that from birth until whenever. Can I push back? Go ahead. I think unfortunately what's happened is, cause I'm a dad mm -hmm. and I have a daughter and we have, and I think social media is, Guilty of this too. We have romanticized parenthood. Oh yeah, yeah. And we've romanticized it so much so that we've reduced children to um, like an advanced puppy dog, <laughs> right? And what I mean by that is that my my child is more so a um, an instrument of my validation, mm -hmm. an instrument of me scratching this maternal or paternal itch. Right. As opposed to my legacy. Right. right. And, yeah. and therefore, we don't necessarily prioritize the things that make sure or give them a better shot at being healthy and happy kids because it's more about us being able to raise somebody. Right. Um, and it, it does a disservice to the kids. And I think that's what happened with our parents' generation. Like, they didn't think the shit through. And then we're Very fucked true. up, right? Very true. And yeah. then a lot of us not thinking shit through, and we're going to fuck up the next generation. So, like, I don't think it should be an option at all. Okay. I think, you know, if you said to me, listen, Alan, um, I'm willing to have a child outside of wedlock. Cool. I'm with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and in that case, it would just be, you know, make sure the father is somebody who's responsible. Because yeah. that's my situation, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but if, if, if you're saying that you want 
kids black kids because they're going to be black. <laughs> yeah. And for me, black boys and black girls in, in particular, to grow up without any father, I've seen that play out terribly. Regardless of how good the mother claims to be, you could right. be super mom. But statistically, your son is more likely to end up in prison. The daughter is more likely to end up at a strip club. <laughs> and, oh, and for me, for me, that's unacceptable. Okay. So, you know, like I said, you know, one of, the, one of the things I've talked about, and I don't know if we have time to really go into it, like, I think as a generation moving forward, we're going to have to renegotiate monogamy, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think the, I don't, I'm not going to say I don't think, I don't know if marriage and long-term partnership can can work like it has before. Because this generation is different, right? (laughs) So with that being said, like, um, it might be multiple uh, homes, right? Mm -hmm. But I still encourage us to be responsible adults and responsible parents. Exactly. As opposed to the dysfunction of old where, yeah, mom and dad were there, but they fucking hated each other. Dad was a drunk. Mom was doing this and this. You know, so... um, I'm willing to renegotiate what partnership looks like, mm-hmm. but kids need two parents. Yeah, no, Absolutely. I'm not saying they don't. And they need a village. Fuck two parents. That's they need minimal. A, yeah. They I need know. a village. That's why I'm a godmother. <laughs> so, and I help so, with that. So how, how do we, you know, again, I'm not even going to the black, pro-black shit because mm-hmm. most people don't care that much but how do we <laughs> how do we guarantee that the next generation of black kids are like good and not all these fucked up that we are um treat them like people stop looking down on them and thinking they don't know what they want or that their emotions are not valid you know um or how we treat them isn't hurting them in some way so, for instance, my God kids, if I'm wrong and I do something and, you know, I get, get them in trouble or something like that and I shouldn't have, I apologize to them. I'm like, I am so sorry. I did not realize that, you know, X, Y, Z or whatever. And I always ask them, how are you feeling about this? Like, do you care that I'm doing this for you or that, um, you know, how I said that to you or whatever. How, how are you on it? And they're vocal about it. You know, they actually know I listen to them. And I think one of the main things that we need to do is listen to them. Just because they're little people does not mean they don't know what the heck is going on. They know. So a lot of, especially when I was growing up, you know, people would say, oh, you're just a kid. You don't know. That is not the case. And that's what creates the adults that we are now because apparently when we were kids, what we thought didn't matter, you know, but yet we're the ones in the future running all these things. So how do our thoughts not matter? You know? Um, and I say to people all the time, us adults, we're literally just overgrown kids with responsibilities. <laughs> like, we still think a lot of times the way that we were when we were children, you know, on some top to- topics, um, we still might even watch some of the kids shows that we used to watch. I mean, I still watch some of the kids shows I watch, you know, um, I still act like a child sometimes in certain situations. That's just because childlike manner is actually freer than being a stuck up ass adult. <laughs> and sometimes I don't want to think about the bills. You know, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't want to think about that right now. I'm gonna go have some fun. I'm going to go on the playground. I don't play around. You know, my mom and I go on the playground. Sometimes we swing on swings. Like, you know, it's, it's that kind of, that kind of lifestyle. And the kids need to see you as a person, not as, oh, my parent is like this stuck up person and they don't like when I do this or don't like when I do that. Or I can't talk to them about certain things. Be open. Show your children that you want them to come to you and talk to you about stuff, you know, that it's okay to mess up. We all fuck up at times. Like it's, it's going to happen. We're human. We're supposed to learn, but please come to me about it, you know? Um, and don't, don't just completely just say to them, Oh, I'm going to beat your ass because you know, you did this. Sit them down and ask them, why did you do that? What was going on in your head at the time? Like, can we understand, can we come to an understanding of each other? You know, and I do that to my guy kids all the time. 
I would say this. You're you're a woman, so a lot of your approach is very feminine. Right. And I yeah. appreciate that. And I think there's a place for that. Now, I think you'll have a unique perspective on this question. As a woman who didn't grow up with a father, mm-hmm. and because of that might lack an appreciation of like... Um, what masculine energy, what what fathers bring to a kid's life or bring to or brings to raising a kid. Why do you think fathers are so vital? I think fathers are vital because there's a sense of protection that comes from the masculine energy, you know, um, and I, I feel this as a woman. You know, a guy who brings that masculine feeling towards me, I feel like I can relax, kind of. Like, I don't have so much going on inside of me. I just can just be, you know? And I feel like a lot of times children need that too, especially, you know, girls to their dads. You know, they feel like, oh, my dad always has me. He's protecting me no matter what. And I actually believe, even though I grew up without a dad, I preferred like I would have loved to have my dad in my life because to this day, if I feel like I need a man in my life for anything, I go to my brothers. I go to my dad, my grandfather, honestly, like I go to them and ask them for their male perspective on things. Um, Or if like, for instance, if I needed to move, a lot of the times I would prefer to have a man to help me out. But um, that didn't happen one time. <laughs> um, and I had to move all my stuff by myself. <laughs> that was, yeah, very unfortunate. I had I cried after that. <laughs> and I was like, man, I want a man so bad. <laughs> so that, you know, stuff like that is very, to me, very important. And um, I mean, women say all the time, I can do this, I can do that. But honestly, it's easier a lot of times with someone else to help you out. And I want an easier life, not a more complicated one. So I'm not against it, you know, like this whole thing, we're talking about having a dad or not having a dad. I'm not against it at all. I'm just stating that if it does not happen, this are my options. You know, I don't want to leave this earth and not continue my legacy. I would rather you get with like a long-term friend and be like, hey, bro, like if we hit 35, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's in two years for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 38, yeah. I don't know how far they move back the clock, but like right. we need to make something happen because for me, not having a father for a kid yeah. should never be the outcome. Well, I've actually thought about that, honestly. So the guys I usually end up having like situationships with or whatever, I always think if I were to get pregnant by him, what kind of dad is he going to be, you know? And um, I've been with dads, actually. So, well, not all the time, but, you know, more. <laughs> I was just saying, like, in my late 20s to, you know, now, I've been with guys who have been dads or, you know, ended up becoming dads or whatever. And all of them are great dads, really good dads. Whether they're good partners or not, they're wonderful dads. And I don't mind being the baby mama, basically, you know? Um, I know they would actually have my back on certain things. I know that um, my kids would be great. <laughs> and they could say, hey, I'm going to my dad's house. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm not that type of person that's gonna be like, no, you can't do that because we're not together. And, um, you know, whatever the situation is, I my kid, they want a dad. I mean, they, okay, need, they need a dad. They absolutely <laughs> they need, their dad. need a father. I do believe that there needs to be at least two parents in a household. And there is definitely needing to be a village to help, you know, keep kids. So I already got the godmama lined up, the aunts and all that stuff like that. Now I'm just got to wait on that. My, my, th- <laughs> my thing, too, is like these days, like I, I've even seen some women say that the kid having a dad isn't necessarily important because I can find one of my brothers or one of the uh, guys in the community to pick up that role. And I always like face palm, like that's fucking stupid. But you can't, you can't think like that. Like you can't think they're going to pick up the slack. Right. You can't expect that. Yeah. You know? It's just like you, you want to get, you want to burden somebody else with a responsibility without any of the pleasure. This nigga got to take care of your kid, but he ain't get no pussy. Like, that makes no sense to me. And you expect him to be enthusiastic about that. Right. And then again, 
like you said, is anybody thinking about the kid and how this is affecting the kid? Exactly. Talk to this child, please. Like, they will tell you. Kids are very vocal about everything, and they have no problems with telling you. The older they get, the more they shut up because they realize, you know, hey, I might not be able to say this. You know, they learn. Um, but when they're like, gosh, they'll tell you if you look good or not <laughs> without you asking, you know? Like, yeah, you're ugly, that kind of thing. So, I mean, kids need to, they need to know that their opinions are important. They really need to know that. How can I get you to guarantee me? <laughs> because again, I don't give a shit if you get married. Yeah. I don't give a shit if it's a successful romantic relationship. What I give a shit is this, those kids have a dad, that daughter mm -hmm. as a dad, the, the mini you. <laughs> I know. Or yeah. the mini male version of you as a dad. That shit is vital, right? Yeah. So how can I convince you that that... I'm going to just do it by myself. It's not an option at all. Take it off. Don't even speak it. Don't think it. Don't even whisper that shit. How can I okay. convince you? No, I don't know. I really don't. Because, like, I'm thinking about all the guys that, I have, that I'm friends with, and I'm like, uh, I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. There might be, like, two maybe I can see those having kids with. But, and you might meet more people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's still young. You'll meet people along the way and shit. Yeah. So, but as far as I'm going to go to the sperm, because I'm, I'm hearing an uncomfortable number of black women in particular keep saying this shit. And I'm like, y'all. <sighs> so, okay. Okay. So, I don't necessarily, I would, of course, love to be married. When I, you know, before I have children. Would love to. One of the reasons why I haven't had any now and I'm, 33. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, if it does come to the situation where I have a kid with a guy that I'm really good with in general, I'm okay with that. And we don't have to necessarily be married. That was actually something I thought about recently too, by the way. Like, and when I say recent, as in the past two years or so, I was like, hey, if I end up pregnant with this guy, I'll be okay with that. <laughs> So, um, and we weren't together, you know, it was just like one of those things of like, I know we'd have beautiful children and he would be a good dad and I would be a great mom and we can just go off and do what we need to do, you know, whether we marry someone else or whatever. But, um, I will make a promise that I'm going to say this, I'll make a promise that within the next five years, I'm going to say that until I'm like 38, <laughs> I will wait on having a kid on my own and see if I find someone else, like a guy to have kids with in that Listen, time. I'm, I'm somebody who, we gonna make this shit happen. <laughs> so if, if you, if you, if it gets closer to, to that time, mm -hmm. this is what I do. Cause right now we've got like 40,000 subscribers. Okay. By then oh, God. we'll probably have a couple million. Okay. You give me the profile. <laughs> I want him to be this tall, this complexion, because he's gonna be black. Uh, I like him uh, light. This, 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 this. You give me the the characteristics. Yeah. I will put out a call, and we're okay. gonna find you a black man who, even if he doesn't want to be with you, yeah, I, I, I'll be the, a part at there, youngin. We got. <laughs> We got to at least vibe really well. I want to at least be good friends. With Ooh, guys. we'll set yeah. up some shit. Y'all we'll, can vibe. We'll take y'all the vibes. You know what I'm saying? But as far as just going to some sperm bank and potentially getting a serial killer DNA. Oh, no, no. Yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Deal? Yeah, deal. Okay. Bet. God don't care. <laughs> no. Dang it. I like I'm over six feet tall. Oh, we got you. Good money, nice smile, beautiful hair, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs>